Hey folks, today is going to be fun. I'm testing out this new travel tripod from Hapi. It's currently up on Kickstarter. They sent it out to me for free. No doubt hoping that I'm going to love it, share it with you guys and they'll get lots of promotion out of it. But refreshingly for Kickstarter, where it so often comes with all these rules and conditions, they're happy for me to just share my full, honest pros and cons feelings on this guy. So I'm going to make this with you in mind, looking at all of the different things I think you want to keep in mind with the travel tripod. Also the concerns about, you know, buying off of Kickstarter and the special features of this and the claims that they make and run through it all and see, does it actually deliver what they say it's going to deliver? And is it worth your cash? At the end of this video, I will give you a definitive if I think it's actually worth the money or not. So let's jump in. Okay, now the first two points you wanna consider for a travel tripod are its pack down size and its overall weight. So pack down like this, it's around 44 centimeters. The head will come off as well, then you could travel with them separately. It easily fits on the side of a backpack or into a normal domestic size check-in. So that's a win. It's also 69 millimeters in diameter, nice, uh, which means it's significantly slimmer in that dimension even than the top you know, the best known travel tripods, it's a good centimeter or so slimmer than them. In terms of weight, it's about 1.3, 1.4 kilograms. So right in the kind of ballpark for a travel tripod. I have to say, when I picked it up, it's actually denser than I expected because it's so small, it actually feels heavier than I expected, but it's 1.4 kilos. I think that's a nice sweet spot for weight. You need it to be uh, stable as well. But if you're really sticking to the seven kilos of carry-on luggage, factor that in 1.4 kilos. But that's with all of the bits I'm about to show you attached. For me, as someone who used to spend six months a year traveling, even more important than the clothes size is the overall compression ratio. So 44 centimeters closed down, great. But then how high does it go up? If you extend the legs all the way, but leave the center column down, it's 126 centimeters. If you put the sub tripod up all the way, we're gonna talk about that more in a second, then it becomes 151 centimeters. Now, if you're using an integrated grip body like a Z9, that is high enough for someone like me who's about six foot tall to get my eye to the viewfinder without having to hunch but if you're using a smaller camera it will be a little bit lower so keep that in mind in terms of how low it will go the main tripod you can get it all the way down to 20 centimeters off the ground including the head the sub tripod also has little ratchets on the legs that will let you get lower. That'll let you get down to 14 and a half centimeters. And if you invert the sub tripod, you can have your camera upside down, basically touching the ground or half a centimeter off the ground so that it's not getting dirty and you can get those shots directly along the horizon. Now stability, that is high on my list of priorities. And I have to say it honestly exceeded my expectations. I'm able to share my full thoughts with you. When I saw this in videos, I thought that the leg segments looked a bit plasticky. I wasn't sure how the build quality was going to be, but honestly, it's rock solid. I've compared it side by side to my previous travel tripod, which costs more than double, and it's more rugged. The legs are slightly bigger in diameter. It is a five leg segment, so you're going to have more segments out, but all of the components that aren't carbon fiber, are aluminum alloy, and it actually feels really nicely built. And having the central column, which we'll get to, that's actually a sub tripod that you can take out and use for separate purposes, but it basically means you have a triple section for your center column rather than just the normal single. Kind of looks like a gimmick, but having compared it side by side to my travel tripod, which is the same size once it's all extended, this one does recover from bumps or wobbles more quickly, and I think having three points of contact is actually more stable. So considering the size and weight, I think the stability is absolutely as good as you could hope for. And I think they've found the right balance for a travel tripod. You don't want a three kilo tripod, even though that would be more stable, you'll leave it in the car. Now, in terms of unique features, this actually has probably more than any tripod I've seen in the past. Having one where a leg detached and became a monopod was kind of a nice gimmick or a nice thing to have. This has so much going on. So obviously you have the sub tripod, you can take this head off, 
if you don't want to be using the sub tripod and you can connect it directly to the main tripod, that's an option. Both the head and inside this main part both have bubble levels. That's a nice addition. The sub tripod and the main tripod all have locking mechanisms so you can get the legs to the exact same dimensions. The way that the sub tripod as the extension levels up, the lockdown mechanism works really nicely. It also has a clickable pan function that clicks at every 10 degrees. but you can also deactivate that. The quick release system is something innovative and works really well. It's got a mobile phone mount here that again works really nicely and it's just a why not have it? They've got space for it, it works fine. It's just a nice little extra to have that you wouldn't even know was there if it wasn't pointed out to you. And hidden inside each of the rubber feet are also spiked feet that you can invert depending on the terrain that you're using. I have to say all of the extra features you might think seem a little bit gimmicky, but honestly, it's really nicely built. It's obvious that a lot of thought has gone into the design and all of these different features, and it all just works great. In terms of price, the retail price after Kickstarter is going to be 400 US dollars. It's up as low as 300 on the Kickstarter with all of the different tiers. I don't want to minimize that three or four hundred dollars is still a fair bit of money but comparing it to what's on the market i genuinely think it's a really good deal the other one that i've been traveling with which has the same basic compression ratio but it's fatter it comes a little shorter to be honest because you can invert it to pack it is 750 dollars, so more than twice the kickstarter price on this one without any of the extra fancy th things in it if you compare it to other ones that have a similar kind of design on the market they're also up around 600 700 dollars so three to four hundred i genuinely think it's a really good deal and because this is a pre-production prototype i think i will buy one for myself so that we can take it on our trips as well now being a kickstarter project there's obvious concerns beyond the normal is it a good tripod that you need to consider so first of all build quality i am genuinely impressed having seen pictures and you know this arrived whilst i was traveling my team sent me pictures and video of it it didn't look amazing it looked fine but getting it in my hand i'm genuinely impressed it feels rock solid and so dense for the size um, i would have no concerns with using this out in the field next up is compatibility the last thing you want when you're buying a tripod is to find out that it's all using proprietary stuff that then you can't mix with your other existing products i was actually concerned with that because reading the specs it seemed like the tripod plate is a millimeter smaller than an arca swiss one which would mean you can't use your existing arca swiss plates i checked with hapi there that's for the pre-production prototype they've adjusted the head somehow for the one that will be delivered and the final one that's sold and it is fully arca swiss compatible so that's great as well as that, all of the different threads and screws are standard sizes. So for example, you could take out the sub tripod and keep using it, then put one of your spare tripod heads onto the main tripod and then have two complete tripod systems ready to go. And the last one, which may be for Kickstarter the most you know, of concern, is warranty and trust. So I had never heard of Hapi. I don't know if you have, but apparently they've actually been selling for years in China on the big platforms there. They're doing Kickstarter to reach you know, a European, American, out of China audience. So there's that. And the warranty on this, I specifically checked, doesn't just cover the legs or that kind of thing. It covers every component. So if there's any issue with any part of it, their warranty should cover that for you. So as far as Kickstarter goes, I mean, it's still always a little bit of a leap of faith, but having one in my hands, I wouldn't have a concern recommending it to you to buy one. Now, the last two things I wanted to cover off first is speed now they're very proud of how quickly you can deploy this i've seen videos of the founder and the designer of this tripod setting it up in 12 seconds so i thought this is about showing you is it delivering what they promise let's try it start the counter as i start the flip okay so one hand you can open all the segments clip 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 oh, i'm not as smooth as him clip 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 Oh, that's going to cost me. You lose it in the corners. 
so however long that was. So I would say it's plenty fast, but kind of who cares? <laughs> Every tripod that has uh, smooth movement and this kind of locking system, you're gonna do it in sub 20 seconds. One thing I will say about it, it does move very smoothly, but it's also a brand new tripod. So it's hard for me to compare it against the other tripods I own that have been through the beach and everything like that. But in terms of speed, it's not slow. If that's really important to you, that's how fast I could do it. Finally, the negatives on this guy. And having gone through it in fairly good detail, the only two things that I can really see that I don't love about it are the pan release knob and then the ball head release lever. Now, actually having worked with it a little bit, the lever is fine. It just took a little bit of an adjustment for me to get used to that being the way you're doing it. The fact that you can pull it out and reposition where it's locking exactly makes it actually quite functional and it locks down rock solid, so no big deal. But then the pan one, for me, with no gloves, with big hands, it's okay. But wearing gloves, I would want this to be 30 to 50% bigger, maybe with deeper grooves so that it was easier to grab at. Now that is, again, a standard size screw, so I guess I could probably change that out myself if I wanted to. I have to say though, I'm glad that the hardware is as it is, just machined uh, aluminum alloy rather than being wrapped in rubber because I can see from my old tripods, over time that all rips away. So that's my overall thoughts on this guy. If you have any questions beyond what I've covered here, feel free to let me know. To answer the question, should you buy it? Is it worth your money? Look, I can't say whether you should buy it or not, but I genuinely think at $300, it's easily the best value travel tripod that I've ever used, probably at 400 as well. It's better than the one I have been using and that costs $750. I would probably go for having a spare ball head if you think you're going to use the separate tripod a lot as a little tabletop one is quite nice. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see myself ordering one or two of these to go in our packs. As someone who has led dozens of photo tours around the world, hundreds of different guests, I can tell you, I see people with all kinds of tripods coming along to the trip, and anyone who has something that's two and a half, three, three and a half kilos in weight, it gets left in the four wheel drive nine out of 10 times because it's just too much to take when you're carrying along all of the camera gear. At home, in studio, yes, you want weight, heft, stability. But for travel, size and weight really are the most important, with stability being, I think, number three and price being number four. And given the trade-off that you can't have super light, super small, and super stable once it's fully extended, I think this pretty much hits the sweet spot of as good as you could possibly do for something under one and a half kilos. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you soon.